you feel me? The sun is setting, don't trust your hearing You made a monster, I'm your imposter Go ahead and wander, but don't trust the water hey guys and welcome back to my channel i am back with another true crime video and today we are going to be doing the story of the causa family also known as the flag murders now if you are new to the channel i try to do these videos every single week so definitely check out the playlist i've done a couple already and i will be doing more in the near future now without wasting any more time let us dive into today's video Today's video takes us to Cape Town in South Africa. In 1994, a young man was born and his mother named him Vusi Ernest Mabaso. Now, it is believed that his family originated from Zimbabwe but came into South Africa in the early 1990s. Unfortunately, Ernest's mother had personal challenges that made it impossible for her to take care of Ernest. So as a result, in his very early teens, Ernest had to go looking for his father, and in his search, he ended up in Kailicha in Cape Town. When he arrived in Kailicha, he was actually received by a family who decided to take him in. Now, this family did not know Ernest and did not know Ernest's father. But because he was a young teenager, they decided to take him in. And for some time, things were really well in that family. Until one of the members of the family started to molest and abuse him. And he decided to run away. And he went to a nearby police station in Kailicha, where he told them what had happened and they decided to call social workers who would then take Enes Mabaso into one of the orphanages in the area and he was placed. He arrived at the orphanage and immediately started making friends. Things were looking up for Ernest once again. He was placed in a local school and was doing really well in his academics. In 2010, when he was in grade 11, he also joined the cycling club and excelled in that too. However, with everything good going on in his life, just a few months later, his life started to take a bizarre turn. Firstly, Ernest decided to go to the principal's office and told his headmaster that it was his last day at school because he had received a scholarship to study in New York. Now, bear in mind, he was in grade 11 and just a few weeks before his grade 11 exams. Now, when the school tried to verify this information, it's schools in New York that would normally give scholarships to pupils in South Africa and in general with other schools around Cape Town to find out if there were any scholarships that were open to students in Cape Town to go to New York and they could not verify any of this information. However, the school did not um, increase this any further. They just left it there and that was it for Ernest Mabaso in terms of education. Ernest did not tell the orphanage that he had dropped out of school, so he continued staying at the orphanage and would leave in the morning with the other students when they were going to school. And instead of going to school, he would wander around the streets of Cape Town. Two years later, when he was 18 years old, it was now time for him to leave the orphanage because you could only stay there up until the age of majority. And because of this, he was then forced to leave the orphanage because that specific orphanage was for kids under the age of 18. Fortunately for Ernest, he was really close with one of the social workers who was working for the orphanage and she decided to take him in and he would then go and live with her and her husband. Ernest was only at the social worker's house for a few days when they woke up in the morning and found that he had stolen the car and some of their belongings, including money and a gun that belonged to the husband. He basically ran away, and for two years, he was completely off the radar. Nobody could account for him for these two years, and he resurfaced again in 2017. Now, in 2017, Ernest Mabaso joined Facebook but decided that he would not be using his real name. He would use a different name for his Facebook account and decided to call himself Sibusi Sokoza. He invited a lot of random strangers, but included in those strangers was a young woman named Mali Koza. 
Ernest told Mbali that his name was Sibusi Sokoza and they were actually related and that they were cousins and he told her that his father was Mandla Koza. Now Mandla Koza happened to be Mbali's late uncle. So it was later revealed that Mandla Koza was a ladies man during his time and had many girlfriends and many children all around. So Mbali immediately believed him because this was not out of Mandla Koza's nature and unfortunately he had passed away. So there was no way for him to verify such or say that no it's not true. So Mbali immediately believed him. Mbali was so excited to have met a long lost family member on Facebook and could not wait to share the information with his rest with the rest of her family and more importantly her mother, who is the sister to the late Madla Koz. Mbali stayed in Johannesburg in Flagfontein. She shared the house with her sister Dudu and their children. They had five kids altogether, Numfundo, Luyanda, Si Bonga Konke, Karabo, and Kanyiso. Nambali's boyfriend also stayed with them in the house, and the name of the boyfriend was Fita Kupe. Mbali and Ernest, known to her as Sibusi Sokoza, would chat on Facebook on a daily basis. As a result of this, they had literally a close-knit bond. So Mbali decided to invite Ernest over to a Pizza Marisburg home where her mother stayed so that he could meet the rest of his family. So Mbali organized everything and everyone in the family was very keen to meet him and only one month after communicating on Facebook, Ernest, known to the family as Sibusi Sokoza, was invited to their Peter Marisburg home to meet the entire family, including Togo Koza, who is Mbali's mother, who stayed there, as well as the sisters and everyone else in the family. Now, Togo Koza, who is Mbali's mother, is also Mandla Koza's sister, who is the man Ernest claims to be his father. Now, you must know, Ernest knows very well that Mandla Koza is not his father. Ernest knows that his father is someone else but was making all of this up. But obviously, the family do not know this. So he made his way to Peter Marisburg to meet Togo Koza and the rest of the Koza family. And when he arrived there, he was greeted by the whole entire family. And Togo was ecstatic to meet her brother's son. And she would later reveal that she immediately fell in love with him. He was extremely charming and came across as a caring and loving someone. Ernest also wasted no time. He glued with the family immediately and was just doing everything. He was fetching water from the tanks. He cooked. He washed dishes. He was doing everything in Toko's house. So the family were really, really impressed by him and liked that he immediately gelled. So when they started conversating and just trying to get to know him even better, Ennis then revealed that he was a doctor and had actually studied at the University of Cape Town where he got his um, degree in medicine and thereafter he went to New York to the New York School of Medicine. Now we obviously know this is a lie because we know that Ernest only has grade 11. Well he actually has grade 10 because he dropped out before he his grade 11 exams. Ernest then went on to reveal that because he had just recently qualified, he was currently job hunting and was actually eyeing Charlotte Matlake Hospital in Johannesburg. Now you must remember, Ernest knows that Bali is um, based in Johannesburg. As much as they are in Peter Marys back at that point to visit the mother, Bali stays in Johannesburg. So he then reveals that he is eyeing Charlotte Matlake Hospital and wants to move to Johannesburg to look for a job there and as they're listening to this then the family's like no man then you can move in with Mbali and Dudu and everyone in Flagfontein in Johannesburg and then while you're there you can then start looking for a job and then you can just pay, stay at the house because it's going to be easier for you and it's convenient and besides you're part of the family you're my brother's son so that was then decided that after the visits Ernest, who they know as Musi Sokoza, would be going back to Johannesburg with everyone else.
Now, the Peter Marisburg visit was a success and everyone really, really loved Ernest. And during the visit, Agnes actually mentioned to Toga Koza, who is Mbali's mother, that he would build her a very big house as soon as he got the job in Johannesburg. And Togo, Mbali's mother, was actually really excited about this. She would later reveal that literally this boy came across as a blessing to her. And she was really, really happy that he had found them. So at the end of the visit, Mbali's mother booked Ennis a bus ticket to Johannesburg because you must remember as much as he was a doctor, he was not working yet so he could not afford the bus ticket himself. So Mbali's mother paid for it and off to Johannesburg they went. Now, when they arrived in Johannesburg, Ernest, who they know as Musi Sokoza, then moved in with them at the Flakfontein house. Now, everything seemed good for a while. Musi so would leave the house in the morning to look for a job in Johannesburg. And Bali also would come back with posts or any information that she could get her hands on regarding anything that has to do with doctors and posts in and around Johannesburg. He would claim that he was applying or he would come up with an excuse as to why he did not want a particular job that Mbali would recommend. But no one really um, suspected anything at this point, but they just thought, no, like Spusiso knows what he wants. And when he finds it, he will apply for it. Now, Ernest, known to them as Busiso, was also welcomed and well-loved around the neighborhood of Flatfontein. He was friendly with everyone and would strike conversations with any and everyone he would see walking around. Now, to recap, in Flatfontein, in the house they were staying in, besides Ernest, there were eight other people who stayed there. It was Mbali who he met on Facebook. It was Mbali's sister, Dudu, and their five children together, as well as Fita Kupe, who was Mbali's boyfriend. So it was seven girls, the Mbali and Dudu and the kids, as well as Fita Kupe, who was the only male. And then when Smusiso came, then it was two males. So the house was quite busy, with people always going in and out of the house and kids playing around outside. It was a normal house in a South African township. Suddenly, about three months after um, Ernest had actually moved into the house, the house went pretty quiet. And no one actually saw the kids playing outside. No one saw Mbali. No one saw Dudu for that matter. And for about a week, and no one saw any of them. And like any other curious neighbors, people actually started to ask Ernest, where is everyone? We haven't seen Dudu in a while. And Ennis actually told them that no, Mbali and Dudu actually had a family crisis back in Cape Town and they actually went there with the kids. So obviously the neighbors only know so much about her family. So they don't know that Mbali actually doesn't have any family in Cape Town and there's no way for them to verify that there was a family crisis or not. So they didn't find this strange or it didn't raise any alarms they actually believed him so that was that so a few months prior to this Mbali and the family were extending the house so there was lots of sand outside that the contractors left so um nonetheless Ernest was seen by their neighbors now carrying the sand that was outside and he was actually putting it inside the house and he basically came out with some excuse that no, there's something that they're fixing, there's a wall that they want to build, so he has to take the sand inside. So he would take um, a wheelbarrow and carry it from the outside to the inside with the sand. And he continued to do this for a couple of days. Now, it was later revealed that Ennis was actually covering up the bodies of Mbali, Dudu and they were little kids, Novundo, Luyanda, Sibonga Konke, Garabo, and Kanyeso. He had actually killed them a few days prior, and before doing so, he had raped some of them. Now, oh, this is literally one of the most upsetting things that I have ever come across. Not only did he rape, but he also killed them and he buried them in their own house while he continued to live in the house with the dead bodies as if they never existed. 
body started to seriously decompose and there was some sort of an odor that was starting to erupt in the house, then he needed more sand to cover it up because he was hoping the more the sand, then perhaps the less the odor. So because he could no longer do it by himself, he started to ask some men and kids around the neighborhood to help him carry the sand from the outside to the inside. Now at this point, he had uh, already covered the bodies, but so they could not see that their bodies in the house, but they could see that there's already a lot of sand. And all he asked them to do was to dump more sand and more sand and more sand. Now, the men would later reveal that there was actually a strong smell in the house while they were doing this, but Ernest would make some sort of an excuse. <laughs> Now, Mbali was a very active person on WhatsApp, especially with her cousin. And when she was now a few days in and she was not communicating with anyone in her WhatsApp groups and was not talking to her cousin who she would literally communicate with on a daily basis. Now, this got the cousin really worried. So the cousin decided to call Dudu, who she knew that also lived with Mbali, to just check if uh, maybe Mbali lost her phone or whatever was going on. Now, when she tried to call Dudu, obviously Dudu's phone was also off and um, this got her really worried. She started sending messages to both of them, now hoping that, okay, one of them would eventually switch the phone on and see that she was worried. And Ernest actually switched on Bali's phone at some point and saw the messages and decided to reply to them to make sure that the cousin doesn't worry any further. Now, when, she, when he replied, he stated that, no, Bali and Dudu were actually not in the house. They had a family crisis. Now, the cousin being very worried about what family crisis is this because she's a cousin so she should know about the family crisis decided to fall to call Togo who is Mbali's mother and just ask what is a crisis because apparently there's a crisis and Mbali and Dudu have gone to Cape Town and Togo was like no there's no crisis that she knows of and we don't have family in Cape Town so what family crisis would be in Cape Town and um, the mother actually mentioned that I've actually been looking for Dudu as well and I haven't been able to reach um, any of them the whole week and then this is when they actually decided that no there's a problem here so they were going to then go and send the cousin to go to Flakfontein to go check on the house what is going on there where are the kids and why is nobody answering so off to Flakfontein the cousin went and on arrival the, the gate was locked and she decided to jump over it as she got closer to the door she was greeted by a very strong odor and she tried to peep through the windows which were completely completely covered with flies at that point this is when she decided that no ways she was going to go to the neighbors to try and get some sort of help when she got to the neighbor's house, she asked them, when last did you see my family? And the neighbor basically said, no, Busi had mentioned that uh, they went to Cape Town and this was last week because they have a family crisis. And now Dudu literally got even more confused because there is no family in Cape Town and there's no crisis at all. So obviously there's a problem. And they asked where is Busiso and they mentioned that no, they last saw him the previous day. And then they also asked where Fita Cooper is. Now Fita Cooper is Mbali's boyfriend. And they said no, he's probably at work. We normally see him every morning. It was at this point that they decided to call the police because the police would then assist them with the breaking into the house because the doors were locked and the police arrived and it was at that point that they discovered the bodies badly decomposed and buried under sand in different parts of the house. Now, upon questioning the neighbors and the entire picture became very grim, the police started to actually 
look into Sibusi. So they also started looking for Fita Kupe just to question him because some of the people in the neighborhood actually claim, claim that they saw him that morning and they actually claim that they saw him literally almost every day for the past week. He would go to work in the morning and come back in the late evening and go inside the house. So if Fita Kupe was going in and out of the house for the past week, and there were bodies in the house with that order, then clearly he knew something as well. So they started looking for Fita Kupe as well. Uh, the person that we suspect is involved in this case is someone that is known by the family. Uh, he's been staying with the family for about three months. He wormed his way into the family, claiming that he was a child of the late brother to the two ladies that are deceased. We believe that he's a Zimbabwean national, although he claims that he's um, from South Africa and his surname is Koza. But what we found, the documents that we found through investigation, it seems to be contradicting. While all of this was happening in Johannesburg, in a turn of luck, a man was arrested in the Eastern Cape driving in a stolen vehicle, only to find out that this man was actually Sibusi Sokoza, a.k.a. Ernest Mabaso. So when he got arrested, he was sent to Johannesburg for questioning. And during the course of his questioning, Ernest Mabaso, a.k.a. Sibusi Sokoza, decided to make Make a confession. He basically claimed in a very bizarre confession that he was abducted by Fita Kupe in Cape Town way before he met Mbali and the family. Fita Kupe and a gang of men went to Cape Town and abducted him and basically said that he must go to Johannesburg and kill Mbali. But in order to get close to Mbali, he would then have to first invite her on Facebook. Fita Kupe would then give Ernest Mabaso all the information that he would need to know about Mali's family, including the fact that he, they have a deceased uncle named Mandla who had passed away, who was really into girls and had many kids around, so he could claim that he is a kid um, that was born from one of his relationships. And he gave... Um, Ernest all the information he could know and that is when he then decided to inbox Mbali on Facebook to claim that he is a long lost cousin. Now ultimately the plan was to eventually get close enough to Mbali to afford him the, the, the opportunity to kill Mbali and make sure that he kills the children as well as Dudu so that everyone in the house dies and the reason for this was because then Fita Kupe claims that he would then be able to inherit the house because it was Mbali's house and then he believed that if they all died then he would be able to inherit the house. So this confession to me was very strange because um, he had so many opportunities to actually let the family know that, listen guys, I am not really Sibusi Sokoza, my name is Ernest Vusi Mabaso and I was coerced by Fita Kupe and his people to actually come to Johannesburg and kill you guys. He had an opportunity back when they went to uh, Peter Morrisburg the very first time for the initial weekend where he went to meet Dudu Koza, who is uh, Mbali Koza's mother. An opportunity when they were there, because Fita Kupe did not come to Peter Marisberg with them, but he did not say anything. He had an opportunity again when they got back to Johannesburg, because he was in Johannesburg in Flakfontein for three months. So for me, it just does not make sense. It is literally not adding up. For three months, you are there. You are going around looking for a job and coming back, and Fita Kupe is not not next to you and you are not going to the police it's just not adding up for me because um he could have literally saved their lives and saved himself the trouble of having to kill people if really he did not want to but nonetheless because the um the police felt like okay you know what this could be plausible for one is that he killed seven people and the police believed that no he needed more manpower he was not going to be able to commit all these crimes by himself because um he committed rape as well while he was killing them so obviously perhaps the family could have been could have 
run away. Some of the people could have run because uh, while he was busy committing the other acts, so they really believed that he committed the crime with other people. So when he confessed, it made sense to them to say, okay, let's look into Ufita Kupe and perhaps he really was an accomplice. So because of this confession, naturally the police decided to start searching for Fito Coupe and they sent out a manhunt to find him. So they eventually found Coupe trying to evade uh, South Africa. He was found in the borders between South Africa and Zimbabwe and he got arrested. Now the trial was set to start in 2019 for both Fito Coupe and um Ernest Mabaso, they both were denied bail during the first proceedings. And however, in January of 2019, Ernest Mabaso hanged himself with shoelaces in his holding cell and he passed away. And unfortunately, because of this, uh, there was no tangible evidence against Fita Kupe because now the person who had actually confessed and had actually implicated Fita Kupe was no longer alive. And there's nothing else besides that confession that could link Fita Kupe to the murders. And because of that, then they had to release Fita Kupe. So he wasn't arrested. Enes Mabaso had killed himself. So literally no one was now held accountable or criminally liable for the murders of um, Dudu and Mbali as well as their children. And for me, that is just so sad, especially for Togo Koza, who is the mother and the rest of the family. Literally, your kids and your grandkids all died in one day and absolutely no one is being held accountable. So this is such a sad and depressing story. So on that unfortunate note, we have come to the end of today's video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.